Hello and welcome to my channel. Overwatch Season 19 has just been released and I'm going to show you guys how to get the absolute best performance, image quality, and latency so you can go from this to this no matter your PC or laptop. So let's get straight into it. The first step is to download the NVIDIA app. We're going to be using this for overriding to the latest DLSS for transform model for better performance and image quality. Next is Vibrance GUI. This little program helps with setting digital vibrance to any game or application without having to do it globally in the NVIDIA control panel. Links to both will be in the description below. And now let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so before we get to the game itself, I'm going to show you some Windows tweaks in the NVIDIA control panel settings. So go ahead and click start and search for game mode and make sure that this is enabled and then click graphics. And down here is going to be a bunch of games and applications that Windows should automatically find. But if for whatever reason, Overwatch application isn't here, you can click browse and then find the game in the, the drive that you have it installed. Click this, click retail, and then add overwatch.exe. And once it's added, click options. And if you're using a laptop, you might have uh, two graphics cards in here. Make sure you're using the high performance dedicated graphics card so that it's actually gonna utilize whatever uh, better GPU you have and not the integrated graphics that comes with your CPU and click save. And then once you're done with this, go to change default graphics settings and make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on. This will help reduce latency and improve performance. That's what it says, improve performance, but that's probably negligible. Uh, but it is important if you're gonna use something like frame generation or smooth motion, then you could check variable refresh rate. Most games have a VRR support already in their settings menu, but it doesn't uh, harm anything to have this here if you're playing older games. And click uh, optimization for windowed games. This is gonna help if you're playing a borderless windowed mode. And since Windows 11 uses a flip metering model, this is going to cut down on latency a lot. Uh, previously, we would have to use full screen exclusive to have the lowest latency while we're playing games. But now it's pretty much negligible, like 0.5 millisecond difference with this enabled. So yeah, this one's a pretty important one if you play on full screen borderless. And that's going to be done. Now we're going to go on to the NVIDIA control panel. So for the NVIDIA, I don't know why that's over there. So for the NVIDIA control panel, I'm not going to overcomplicate this. Um, there are probably a lot of clickbaity YouTube videos telling you that you're going to get 500 FPS from using this. It's not that deep, honestly. You could just copy all of my settings here. And we'll just, uh, yeah, go through those. The important ones are going to be monitor technology. So if you have a VRR compatible screen, for me, it's G-Sync uh, compatible for my um, Samsung monitor. So I'm, I'm actually using G-Sync because I don't like screen tearing. So if you also do not like screen tearing and want a smoother picture, have this uh, selected here. The other thing that's important is uh, shader cache size. Um, just put 100 gigs here. You could put driver default, but certain games actually perform better, like some single player games like Elden Ring. When you put 10, 100, or unlimited, you just keep 100 GB. Um, and that's going to help with shader caching for certain games and maybe emulators as well. And the other one you're going to want to keep is uh, keep on is vertical sync, especially if you have G sync enabled here. If you plan on using G sync, you have to have V sync enabled in the NVIDIA control panel. This is not going to cause the kind of input lag that it would cause if you enable this in game. You need V sync enabled to use G sync properly. And since we're going to be using NVIDIA reflex in game anyway, it's going to help cut down latency significantly. So trust me, if you want a smooth image, you're going to want G-Sync and V-Sync on in the NVIDIA control panel. And now we're going to move on to the in-game settings. All right, so go ahead and open up the game and go to your video settings. But before we do anything in here, I want you guys to open up Task Manager real quick. So go ahead and do that. And then I want you to click Details and scroll down until you find Overwatch.exe. Right-click and then set Priority to High. And then right-click again and set Affinity to Disable CPU 0 or Core 0. The reason why we disable Core 0 is because it is sharing the resources with Windows Scheduler. And by disabling Core 0, it'll give you like 10 to 20 FPS depending on the game. And this behavior is consistent across games like Rainbow Six Siege X, um, Call of Duty Warzone, Elden Ring, and especially now Overwatch. And I'm going to show you the difference between all of the tweaks that we've done in Windows as well as the in-game settings versus stock and you'll be able to see the kind of performance gains we get. So let's head back into the game. For GPU, you're going to want to select your dedicated graphics card in here. If you have a laptop, again, you might have two um, with GPUs. One is going to be your integrated graphics card, and one is going to be your main. Obviously, you're going to want to choose your dedicated GPU for the best performance. And then for graphics API, I would highly suggest you stick to DirectX 11, as we have for like 10 years. They did add DirectX 12 a long time ago. 
the problem with this is that the nature of DirectX 12 is to build shader cache. And the way to build shader cache is for you to play the game and have stutters every time something new happens. But every time you play a new character or there's a new ability or there's a new part of the map, it is going to stutter and build a shader cache for it. I do not suggest using this because it'll be like a couple of hours of gameplay for you to build the shader cache for this entire game, depending on what maps you get and what characters you play. So I think it's just a waste of time. And I don't think you're going to get such a huge performance benefit with DirectX 12. So you could stick to DirectX 11 for this uh, for this game. For display mode, I prefer borderless windowed because I like to alt tab out of the game. Like I showed with game mode, the optimized for windowed mode setting, it's not going to actually hurt your latency at all, especially since we have NVIDIA Reflex in here. So if you want to uh, alt tab, I suggest using borderless windowed. Aspect ratio is personal preference based on the monitor you have. If you have an ultra wide monitor, you can choose uh, 21 by 9 or 32 by 9. I think they'll have options for that in here. But for most people, I think we have 16 by 9, so you can just keep it at that. Field of view, I keep full because I just like seeing more on my screen. But feel free to like experiment with this based on what your preference is and your DPI. Dynamic render scale, I keep off because we're going to be using upscaling for image quality. And I prefer keeping it performance because I want the. Um, image well not i want but the image does look respectable even at dls's performance because we're going to be using the transformer model and i'll show you how to override that later in the video with the nvidia app that i had you download so if you want the best combination of image quality and performance dls's super resolution is going to be good and you're uh, welcome to choose whatever you want in here based on however much performance you get and what kind of image quality you like so i'll show you more of that stuff later Frame rate is going to be set to automatic by default, but you can click custom here and put a value that would be closest to your average FPS when you're playing the game. I actually suggest that you do that and not keep it at like 300 or 600, especially if you're getting nowhere near that FPS. And if you have G-Sync and V-Sync enabled in the NVIDIA control panel along with NVIDIA Reflex, it's not going to matter because Reflex is going to lock your FPS below your monitor's refresh rate. But if you're not using NVIDIA, sorry, if you're not using G-Sync and V-Sync, or if you're not using a video reflex and you just want your FPS capped in here for better frame pacing, go ahead and put the best average FPS that you can get in here. All right, so VSync, triple buffering, and reduced buffering, I suggest you keep these three off. It's just going to have input lag. And now NVIDIA reflex, right? If you are CPU bound, that means that if your GPU utilization in the any of the overlays that you have are below 90%, you are CPU bound. So you're going to want to keep this on enabled. And if you are GPU bound, you're going to want to keep this at enabled plus boost. This will help your GPU not hit 100% utilization, which does have spikes of input lag because the frame times are not going to be smooth and consistent. So NVIDIA Reflex will just bring that back a bit. You might lose like 5 or 10 FPS, but it will definitely make the game feel smoother if you have this enabled, if you're GPU bound. So depending on your situation, you could choose enabled or enabled plus boost. Gamma correction, contrast and brightness or self, uh, you know, you can Self-explanatory, you could use this based on your monitor. Now for graphics quality. Upscaling is my personal rec recommendation for anyone with an RTX 20, 30, 40, or 50 series graphics card is NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution. Again, I'll show you the image quality differences and how to enable the transformer model so you'll see for yourself if you want to use this or not. For anyone with AMD or Intel GPUs, you can use FSR 2.2. Do not think about using this. It's complete dog shit. FSR 2.2 is a temporal upscaler, and it does actually do a decent job in this game. So this is actually quite usable. And again, I'll show you the image quality comparison between all of these. Now for the rest of these, these all of these settings are pretty much the competitive optimized settings that uh, you can use for a balance of visuals and performance. Now, if you are really struggling for performance, obviously you are welcome to put every single thing here to low if you really need all the FPS you can get. Otherwise, for everyone else, this is going to be the best balance for, again, image quality and performance. So just copy these settings. And now we're going to move on to the side-by-side -side comparisons. And I'll show you the differences between all the Windows tweaks, the NVIDIA control panel stuff, and optimized settings versus stock. So on the left side, we have 1440p native with stock settings, which are mostly high, along with none of the Windows tweaks we did. And on the right, we have 1440p DLSS optimized settings with all of the Windows tweaks we did. You could see that there's actually a huge gap in performance. And on the left side, 
it was actually kind of shocking how low the 1% lows were before all of the tweaks that we did. And I double checked and triple checked by running that exact test multiple times. Oh, by the way, this test is a custom workshop tool. Um, the code is in the top middle there if you guys want to try it for yourself. It simulates an extreme load on both your CPU and your GPU, but especially your CPU. It's just going to show you the best difference between any of the tweaks you do. So feel free to use this code to look at the difference yourself. Anyway, the 1% uh, lows on the left side were abysmally low. So again, I ran the test multiple times and I found the same average uh, FPS. In a game, it's not as bad. Obviously, again, like I mentioned, this is a very extreme load. But it is, at a glance, very quick to see that the differences that you made in terms of graphic settings and Windows tweaking are very apparent here. So it's a nice tool to quickly see the difference. But now we'll be switching over to a match replay so you guys can see a more realistic comparison between stock and optimized settings. Now that we're in a match replay, you could see that the 1% lows on the left side have increased, but it's still not uh, ideal because if you are trying to hit a higher refresh rate target, 117 1% lows is not going to feel particularly smooth, whereas the right side is sitting at 190 average FPS, which is, sorry, average 1% lows, which is significantly smoother, especially if you take a look at that frame time graph on the left side, it's spiking up and down, especially during team fights quite a bit, whereas the right side is much, much smoother with better frame pacing, higher average FPS. So yeah, even in a real match, this does make quite a bit of difference, especially to input lag. So the performance tweaks we did were very successful in that regard, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Now that we're done looking at the performance of the game, we can move on to the image quality comparison. So these are going to be the four most common options for image quality in the game with native SMAA, which is what we've been used to since the launch of the game, and native DLAA, which is what we can enable using the NVIDIA app for the absolute best image quality I'm sure you can see. Next is going to be DLSS, which we are going to override with the latest Transformer model, which doesn't look too shabby, especially at 720p. And last is going to be AMD FSR 2.2, which has been in the game for a couple of years and is pretty viable for those of you who do not own RTX graphics cards. Again, the absolute best image quality, it's going to go to the DLAA. It's able to completely fix the anti-aliasing, like noisy raw pixel look of native 1440p SMAA and it also enhances and upscales a lot of the texture detail on the model itself that gets lost with the uh, native resolution and DLSS performance even at 720p is able to for the most part keep up with DLAA just a little fuzzier and a little more pixelated around the edges but that's to be expected since it's 720p and that is going to be my recommended choice if you have an RTX GPU try using DLSS at performance balance or quality based on your preference for whatever resolution you have it is in my opinion much better than native in terms of like image detail and anti-aliasing especially for the AMD guys use FSR 2.2 it is still better anti-aliasing than native resolution it's a bit soft so you you can use the sharpness slider to uh you know sharpen it up and yeah that's going to be my uh, image quality comparison and now we're going to move on to the nvidia app tutorial where i'll show you how to override the dlaa and dlss transformer model all right so go ahead and open up the nvidia app i had you download earlier and once it's open go to settings and come down here to games and apps click view and modify and automatically the app should have detected a lot of your or most of your directories in here for your storage devices but if for some reason if you don't have your um, ssd or hard drive in here you can add it yourself you just select a drive for me it's f click select folder and it'll be added in here and click close click scan now and it's going to go through all of the drives to find applications and games and once that's done click graphics and go ahead and find overwatch 2 and scroll all you can ignore all of this stuff this is the uh, graphic settings in game which you don't want to touch in here scroll all the way down till you find dlss override model presets this is what uh, enables us to put DLSS, the latest DLSS transformer model in the game for the override. So you're going to click use different settings for each DLSS technology. And Overwatch only has the DLSS super resolution upscaling. So you're going to click this and click latest to keep it simple and press apply. So now you have the latest DLSS for transformer model in Overwatch. And you can do this for any of the other games that you have provided that they are supported by NVIDIA. And now if you want to put DLAA in Overwatch, you come down here to su uh, override super resolution. You click this, you check DLAA, and click apply. Now, if you want only the super resolution part and not the DLAA part, you have to, you know, do that again. Because if you put DLAA here, it's going to override this. So you need, for, for DLAA, you need both of these, right? But when you're in the game, you're, and you only want to use quality, balance, or performance, you're going to have to disable DLAA here because otherwise this is going to override this part. 
a little confusing, but trust me. All right, one more time. Model presets is only if you want to put transformer model for super resolution upscaling, quality, balance, and performance. Uh, override super resolution is going to be for DLAA, where you were going to force DLAA at your native monitor resolution. And now we're going to move on to Vibrance GUI, where I'm going to show you how to enable the digital vibrancy, and I'll show you side by side comparisons as well. Go ahead and open up Vibrance GUI. It's only going to be this one .exe file, and you could place this anywhere in your hard drive or desktop. As long as you have this auto start with Vibrance GUI enabled, it will just start in a tray down here like this. You don't have to start it every single time you turn on your PC. And then make sure you also check effect primary monitor only and never change resolutions in here. And all this little program does is it gives you access to this Vibrance slider. So before we would have to go into the NVIDIA control panel like this, go to adjust desktop color, and then you would uh, adjust digital vibrance in this slider here. The problem is this would affect your entire Windows uh, color, which is not ideal. So this little program actually helps us remedy that. And the way you use it is if you want to add your game of choice in here, you can click add. If it's running in the background, it'll show up in here and you could just choose that uh, game or application and it'll show up in here. Otherwise, if you want to add it manually, you could just do this, click uh, the drive where your game is installed. So for me, it's F, click Overwatch, go to retail and then click overwatch.exe and click open. And once it's in this trade, you can double click to open it. And this is your in-game uh, vibrant slider. So for me, I prefer 60%. Uh, over the base game colors, but you might prefer 80 or even 100, depending on what kind of monitor you have and the color gamut of that monitor. So go ahead and mess around with this and then click save. And now I'll show you what this looks like in game so you can see for yourself. If you take a look at the left side, oh, uh, that's not the right file. Anyway, on the left side, we have Vibrance GUI off with default in-game contrast and brightness. And on the right, we have Vibrance GUI on with adjusted in-game contrast and brightness. You can immediately see that on the right side, it's more vibrant, contrasty, and looks more appealing, at least in my opinion. But you can go ahead and mess around with the in-game contrast, gamma, brightness sliders, as well as vibrance GUI based on your monitor's panel type and color gamut to get the best image quality that fits your preference. As for performance, well, GUI, well, vibrance GUI doesn't have a performance cost. And you can see that even on a budget PC with an RTX 4060 and Ryzen 5600, we can output a consistent 240 FPS or 240 Hz experience with good image quality and graphics settings, which can't be said for other games. Yeah, I'm looking at you, buddy. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the tweaks we did and the performance gains were quite substantial, which I hope is the same for all of you. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. If this guide was useful to you, let me know by commenting down below. And while you're down there, you can help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe so you don't miss guides like these for all your favorite games. I'll see you in the next one.